Hello and welcome to the Just Talking About Films podcast, where this is our review of the films of 2021. My name is Ian Sargenson. My name's Luke Taylor, and it's great to be with you. We're going to be having a look at... Now, we're being quite specific. It's films that were released in 2021 yeah. here. Now, we may have, we were just having a bit of a chat before we came on. We may have got a bit confused about some of them. Um, I didn't realise, for example, The Unforgivable was 2021. I've got that in my 2022 list already. <laughs> um, so there might be a little bit of uh, confusion on that, but we've tried to keep to 2020, 2021 as best we yeah. can. Yeah, so before you get all, well, I, technically that was released, uh, that, that was made in, we're not on about when it was made, we're on about when it was released. Yeah. So for example, Sound of Metal was made in 2019, I think it was finished, um, but it wasn't released till 2021, certainly here in the UK. So um, so yeah, that's what we're going off. So if you've got any issues with that, just keep them to yourself. <laughs> so my favourite film of 2021 is Rocky. No, I'm joking. <laughs> No, so, yeah, it will be films that were released in 2021. Yeah. Okay. Well, so what we're going to do is we're going to do our top tens first. We each have a, a compiled a top ten of the best films we've seen this year. And uh, and then we also have some awards to give out for specific categories. Of course, the first category is best film. Well, of course, that's probably going to be number one on both of our lists. Yeah, I think it was um, it was difficult. For me, when I was compiling this, I don't know what you found, Luke, because it was like, what do I, what am I rating it on? It was like, did mm. it, which did I enjoy most, which was the best made film, which um, had nostalgia feels. So there was very different things. So I was thinking when I was trying to culminate the list in my head, I was like, but that's probably a better film than that. But I enjoyed that more. Yeah, so, that's what I've gone with. I've gone with what I've enjoyed the most rather than what I think is necessarily yeah. the best made film. Because, um, you know, it's all a personal thing anyway, isn't it, this kind of thing? Yeah, it is. But, I mean, I might be able to speak into it more when we get down the list um, to give an example of what I'm talking about. Be before we do, before we get into our top tens, are there any films that you just want to mention that didn't make your top ten but you think are worthy of a mention anyway? Um, I don't know. As I talked about last week, like The Lost Daughter didn't make my list. Hmm. Um, but it's still quite a, a. I'm still not sure what I think about it. Whether it was a waste of time or it was a masterpiece, so it's somewhere somewhere on that spectrum. So, so yeah, I think Olivia Coleman's performance is worth a mention. Um, but yeah, so it didn't that the film itself didn't make my list. So yeah, and there's some films for me, like for example, The Power of the Dog. I'm a little bit on that, but I don't know because I, I, I didn't watch it till this year. It's not going to make last year's list anyway. It's in this year's. Um, but there's some films that films I'd forgotten about until I started putting my list together, like Greenland. I thought, oh, yeah, I enjoyed that. But it feels such a long time ago. I can't remember enough about it. Yeah, with me, it's like the last few weeks. I mean, I could go back and check the dates. The last few weeks since Christmas, it's hard to tell for me to tell you which films I watched before <laughs> New Year and which I watched after New Year. So. Yeah. So some of mine, I might actually watch it in 2022, but it's a 2021 film, so. <laughs> um, a couple that didn't make the list for me that I just want to mention, because I thought they were very good. Um, it Big Christmas, I thought was <laughs> a pleasant surprise. Promising Young Woman was a very good film. Mm -hmm. um, Freaky, just missed out on my list. Uh, Those Who Wish Me Dead and Cruella. Um, and The Tomorrow War. The Tomorrow War I really enjoyed, but unfortunately yeah. it didn't make my top ten. Yeah, it didn't make mine either, but I thought it was... I enjoyed it. Um, I think I enjoyed it more because my expectations were low because it got panned. Yeah, yeah. It's nice to be surprised by a film, and I, I thought it was a nice surprise for me, that one. Yeah. Um, right, do you want to go first or second? Second. <laughs> okay. <laughs> then we'll start with number 10. Number 10, for, should we just do 10, like, the same number each, or should we do our full? No, I yeah, just do the same number. Well, it's, what do you want to do? Yeah, let's do 10s, then 9s each, okay. and then, yeah, because we'll probably get some. So number 10 for me, um, which just switched with Freaky the other day, um, is Mitchell's versus The Machines. Right, okay. Which was um, one of those films that I had no expectations for, but I giggled the whole way through. The story's well done. It's a nice family story. Animation's really good, and, uh, yeah, I just a thoroughly good time. Yeah. Um, just before I get going to my 10, 
I think that you think we'll have the same number one, but I don't think we will. I don't think we do either, actually. Okay. And we might have done, but I changed my number one this morning. Oh, I've changed mine. My number one's been my number one since I watched it, so it was... <laughs> so, we'll see. so, um, so for yours was Mitchell's Against the Machines, which is in my list, but it's not ten. M- m- ten for me was Nobody. Nobody. With Bob Odenkirk. Again, it was one I didn't really know anything about. I got the m- basic premise from the trailer. Um, but mm. I really liked it. I really thought it was, it was well done. It was fun. It was... Tongue in cheek with its cartoon violence that somehow seemed to be full on violence. You know, I mean, it's like something from, from from a cartoon, but it was still quite bloody. Yeah, the uh, best line in that film is "You brought a lot of guns, well, you brought yeah. a lot of Russians." <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That that was in consideration for one of the awards later for me, but it didn't quite make it. So yeah, for me, it would be nobody. I thought Bob Odenkirk was was superb in that. So. I'll comment on that in a bit because that is in my list as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I thought it would be. Um, number nine for me is In the Heights. In and the I Heights. cannot believe I've put a musical on my list. But uh, for me, this film, it hit me at the right time, maybe. It, cinemas had just opened. It's one of the first things I'd gone back to see. And it was just hit me right where I needed to be. It was joyful. It was great on the big screen and I just came away with a smile on my face I, I remember we were in watching it and Amelia spent the whole film thinking he's going to be hating this he's going to be hating this and it spoiled her enjoyment a bit <laughs> but she came, I came out and I was just like that was great I, I had a wonderful time with that and I've watched it several times since and every time I've thoroughly enjoyed it unfortunately the songs are now firmly lodged in my head forever yeah, that would be an honourable mention for me. It's a film I enjoyed. I watched it just before Christmas, but it didn't make my list, actually. Um, probably just because I thought there was 10 films that I enjoyed more. So. Yeah. Well, um, but, yeah, it was a lot of fun. It was a pleasant surprise, because I say, I didn't wasn't expecting much after... Um, what's it called? Hamilton. Hamilton. Because Hamilton thoroughly confused me, and I didn't know what was going on, and I thought it would be more of the same. I couldn't understand, but... Really followed story, really enjoyed it. So yeah, I, I like this, the, and, and not not to give anything away, but it's about people who want to be somewhere else, mm. and and discovering where they really belong in in, in the world. And and I, I, yeah, I just you know, great story. So for me, number nine is Power of the Dog. Oh, good film. So I enjoyed it. I thought it was good. I think I pretty much not specifically, but guessed what would happen. Did you? You guessed the end. end. Yeah, um, so um, yeah, so but I enjoyed it. I thought the performances were strong. It kind of, uh, well, particularly from Cumberbatch, thought the performance was excellent. Um, but there was like a, a tension underlying throughout that you could feel. A very uh, tense film. And you knew there was something hidden, but you didn't fully quite know what until the story went on. So yeah, it was good. It was only ones where. Again, where seemingly not a lot happens, mm. but but you you're in there and you're engrossed uh, throughout. Thought the script was good, I thought it looked good. So, so yeah, that that was number nine for me. That's very good. It hasn't made my top ten purely because I've only just seen it, so I put it down as in my head as a 2022 film. Okay. Um, but yeah, very good film. At number eight for me, we have West Side Story. Two musicals back to back. I know. <laughs> I'm ashamed, but actually, West it is so well made. It is Spielberg just on form. Um, you, you spent you, you sit looking at the film, you go, "This it's it's just it's beautiful to look at." It's I don't like the songs as much as I like it in the Heights songs, but I think as a film and the 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 the, the production of it is just it just nudges it, and uh, so well made, so well made, and a great cast. I haven't seen it. I haven't seen the original. I don't think I ever saw. I'll have to get get both of them watched. Yeah, so it's really worth it. Really good. Spielberg, absolutely on top form, proven that he can do any genre. So it's, a, it's loosely based on Romeo and Juliet, is it? It is, yeah, yeah. Um, but, no, which uh, I like, so I'll, I'll, I'll watch that. Yeah, very good. Um, for me, eight was The Unforgivable, which I think you've already mentioned. Um, yeah, I've got that in 2022 as well. <laughs> with Sandra Bullock. Um, so we discussed it last week. I thought it was a good film that was kind of focused on the main central themes and the main central characters to and, and everybody else was peripheral and everything else was peripheral. But I didn't mind that so much because 
I thought the, the central story was strong, the central performances were strong. So, yeah, I enjoyed it um, much more than I thought I would. And I say, it was one of the ones that there's a twist, but I didn't I didn't get onto it. I just didn't, no, I had no I idea. Really, I was like, I, oh, it I should have. towards that final scene so well, so well. Yeah, very, well, very well done. And, uh, yes, yeah, Sandra Bullock, yeah, excellent performance. Yeah. Yeah. That might have made my list if I'd, if I'd, if I'd not got confused about what year it came out. <laughs> Um, number seven for me is The Green Knight. Yeah, I haven't um, seen that. Which is, it's just, I mean, it's it's hard to describe. It's it's visually, it's amazing. Um, and it's the story, but it's the story, it's kind of, it's almost hallucinogenic, the film as you're watching. I mean, it's a weird, very strange ride. Um, is, yeah, but a great, I mean, it's a, it's a, you know, it's a really old story, but told in a way, that I followed everything that was going on really well. Uh, performances are great, but it's just the visuals on it were amazing. Um, very good. And the music, music's great as well. Um, well worth yeah. a watch. Um, Green Knight. Um, it's not for everyone. It's very slow. You know, it's a film to be patient with. But uh, yeah, really enjoyed Green Knight. It's a shame oh. I didn't get to see it in the cinema. I'll have to get to see it. I haven't got to it yet. Um, I don't know why. I don't know if it's one of the ones that people keep mentioning, it, or maybe you keep mentioning. It, but I just, <laughs> it's just it's when I go to watch a film, it's just it doesn't either enter my head or I don't see it. So, hmm. so I'll get around to it. I'm sure it's on the watch list. I think um, for me, number seven was The Father. Oh, right. Which probably would have been higher, but it was so hard hitting, so harsh, so sad. In many ways, that um, that um, yeah, it it was just one of them films that I probably only want to watch once. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? There's lots and um, lots of emotions in it, but yeah, I just thought it was probably just more for the performances, but yeah, and the subject matter that it was tackling and stuff. So mm -hmm. yeah, I just thought it was a really powerful film. I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it. It's on my. I think it's just coming to Prime, so I think I've just added it to my watch list. Um, but I've I've heard good things about, it, but I've not not seen it. But I've heard it's pretty harrowing to watch, especially when when we've had family members go through a similar mm, thing. Absolutely. There's a little something part of me that's like, I don't know if I want to watch this. Yeah, it's something that's touched everyone or most people. So it's yeah, it is. It says it's difficult. It's a difficult watch um, at times, um, and a lot to relate to. So yeah. Uh, number six for me was, it's already been mentioned, uh, Nobody. Um, really enjoyed Nobody. If you'd have said Bob Odenkirk doing a John Wick film a few years, you'd have thought, well, I can't imagine that. Mm. But it just, it works so well. He's very convincing as a, a put-upon guy who is actually a really dangerous guy. And uh, he plays it so, so well. Great performance. Great uh, choreography on it. The bus sequence in that is brilliant. Um, and it's just an enjoyable ride. It's ludicrous. And you know it is. <laughs> you know, but it knows it is from the first scene where you introduce him with a cat in his jacket. <laughs> you know, mm. <laughs> And you just know it's ludicrous. Um, but yeah, great fun. Yeah. And I think, I don't know, I think I was a bit, not, yeah, not a bit less surprised just because... I think in Better Call Saul, you see Bob Odenkirk go from a similar character to to Saul Goodman. So mm. he, he, I think he's used to playing two kind of opposite people. But he's such a talented actor and so convincing. So Yeah. Um, for me, six was The Sound of Metal, which we mentioned. Mm. So, um, yeah, it was say made. I think it was made in 2019. But the performances were good. It was something I kept thinking... Why would I want to watch this? Sounds ridiculous. You're like, what can, how can you make a film about that? But it was about much more than that, and about, about um, you know, much more than hearing loss and those characters and different things. So I just thought it was really good, and yeah, um, yeah. So yeah, I've not just... seen it, and it's, it's a one I keep. Again, it's probably a Green Knight situation for me. It's one I keep meaning to watch, and then every time I'm looking for something to watch, it doesn't even enter my mind. Um, but yeah, it, I'm gonna I'm gonna make sure I stick that on my up next because um, I've heard nothing but good things about it. I haven't heard a bad thing about it. Um, number five for me 
is The Last Duel. Okay. Um, Ridley Scott's um, film um, with um, Matt Damon, Jodie Comer, and, um, oh, what's his name? Kylo Ren. Adam Driver. Adam Driver, sorry. Adam um, Driver. I was writing it down to watch it. Yeah, all the performances in it. It's such a, a, a clever way of telling the story, making you explore different points of view. Um, whilst at the same time realising only one version can be true. And uh, it's tense, it ups the stakes. Yeah, it's a really good film. Really enjoyed it. And I, again, I didn't go see it at the cinema out of choice this time, even though it wasn't on for long. And I wish I had. I wish I had. Great film. Mm. Uh, Ridley Scott knows how to do medieval. Yeah. Um, and I'll, yeah. Um, I've, I've got on the list. I assume that is one I do want to watch. So... Um... For me, number five was Mitchells versus the Machines. Um, it was such a surprise. It was such a feel-good film, and it was such a well-made one because a lot of these animations get churned out, and a lot of rubbish. Yeah, you have to sometimes sift through just because of the sheer amount. Because of the the, um, the business is huge, you know, children's entertainment or whatever, and you know, films for kids. So there's a lot of rubbish that comes out. And when I hadn't heard of it, and then it was released, I was like, well, it can't be that good. You know what I mean? Yeah, because um, it. Can they give it to Netflix? Was it Sony? Sony, yeah. Yeah, and, and I was like, oh. But it was just really surprising, really funny, real well-made jokes. You know, like things like Shrek, where it doesn't matter what age you are or what level you are, there's so many levels of humour and so many levels of dialogue. So, yeah, I just really enjoyed it. Um, it was just a pleasant surprise, maybe a miserable time as well. Yeah, yeah, really good. Really enjoyed it. Uh, number four uh, for me is Last Night in Soho. Okay. Um, I'm a big Ed Edgar Wright fan. I think every film he's done has been great. Um, and this is him trying his hand at something new. It mightn't be my favourite Edgar Wright film, um, but nevertheless, it's, uh, it's, it's a fascinating film to watch. It had me on edge the whole time. Um, and I didn't guess where it was going at the end, which is always nice. Um, so really, really enjoyed it. It just builds and builds. And yeah, you spend most of the film really tense <laughs> and really stressed out. And uh, and that's a good thriller, in, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah, and absolutely. It, you know, it had this sort of ghost story edge to it as well. And it was, it was it's hard to describe it without giving too much away. Um, but it jumps between now and the 60s um, and, uh, you know, telling the story of two people who are basically, I guess, abused by the system and, and the way that, you know, um, but, but it's a very, very good film. And uh, yeah, thoroughly enjoyed it. Not the best Edgar Wright film ever, but still right up there. I'll have to check it out. Um, so for, as I say, it's another one I haven't seen. For me, um, number four is Ghostbusters Afterlife. So yeah, that's high. Yeah, it, well, it was high because it, it was one of them ones that, as I say, at the time, I wasn't sure how I felt about it. I thought it could have been better. I wanted more. That was all the stuff I said. Mm. But purely for nostalgia, purely for the fact that it was Ghostbusters, fact, purely for the, well, not purely for all three facts, but <laughs> the fact that it brought Ghostbusters to a new generation or brought some kind of up to date. Um, and there were some good performances in that, really good, you know, in standout that we've talked about um, on the episode which we did about Ghostbusters Afterlife. So if you haven't heard that, go back and check that out. Um, but yeah. There was a lot of things in there that it was just a really exciting spectacle. Hmm. Yeah, I could have expected wanted more from the film, but maybe I just wanted it to do too much within one film. So, mm -hmm. you know, I wanted everything in there, whereas um, you don't have to do it all in one two-hour film. You can make more. So, yeah. So we'll see. So yeah, I, I enjoyed it, but say a lot of it was just because of the sheer nostalgia and the Easter eggs in it that just means like. Yeah, it does get a big nostalgia factor. It didn't quite make my top 10, unfortunately. I think mainly because, it, a little bit like you, I wanted a bit more from it. Um, I, I liked it. I didn't love it. But I liked it, I think. Okay. Um, but I think it needs a second watch before I decide properly. Because okay. you have all these expectations before you go see something like that that you've yeah. been looking forward to for ages. And it can't meet the expectations you have sometimes. Um, so be interesting to give it a rewatch with them lowered a bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. So it's just come out. I think I'm gonna yeah rent that. Uh, where are we up to number three? Yeah, 
Number three for me was A Quiet Place Part Two. Okay. Um, absolutely loved it. I think not as good as A Quiet Place Part One, but that is, you know, a great, great film. Um, but I think it it progresses the story in a way that ups the stakes without getting out of hand, without stopping being what was attractive about it. Um, and uh, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Great performances. Emily Blunt, brilliant in it again. Um, so really, really enjoyed A Quiet Place Part 2 and uh, it had me on edge and I really hope they make a third one where mm-hmm. they up the stakes again and uh, and develop that story even further because uh, I'm, you know, all in on those films. So I haven't got to Part 2. Well, I enjoyed Part 1, so... Yeah, Part 1, yeah, yeah. I think it just, it progresses it in a way it should. You know, sometimes sequels just repeat. Sometimes yeah. they take things too far and I think it's a, a, it's a natural progression of opening up the world a little bit at a time, and I yeah. think it works really well. Good stuff. Um, for me, three was James Bond, No Time to Die. Ooh, wow. Well, I didn't even make my uh, 15. <laughs> it didn't? No, <laughs> it didn't. <laughs> so, yeah, it's right there for me. So 99% of the film, well, maybe 95% of the film absolutely loved. Um, just it was pure Bond. It was so well made. Daniel Craig was excellent. Have you reconciled with the end of it yet? No. <laughs> but it is what it is. Um, and yeah, so as a film as a whole, taking it as a whole rather than just that disappointment. Um, so, for instance, that got it wrong, the end, where, for me, No Way Home gets it right. Do you know what I mean? The end was like, could have all felt, not all fell down on that, but I would have been more than about that, but so I thought the endings were so yeah, but as a film, the spectacle as a cinema, um, as a trip to cinema, it was just unbelievable. Just visually great, so fun, all the things that make Bond Bond. Um, yeah. I just didn't like the ending. Yeah, I mean, I liked it. I liked it fair enough. It just didn't make my. There was other films I liked more. I think mm-hmm. that was. I actually quite like the end, and I'm on board with the end. But um, yeah, it didn't. It just there was films I liked more. You know, but you know. I, I'm kind of a, in that position with Bond usually. It's like, yeah, it's, it's okay. Um, although the action sequence at the start, I think, was, was brilliant. Mm-hmm. Really good. Um, but uh, it just kept getting knocked off by other films that <laughs> I preferred. Uh, number two for me, this is where we find out whether we have gone the same way. Uh, Spider-Man No Way Home is number two for me. Um, really, it was number one yesterday but then i've reassessed and gone actually it's number two it's it was i had a thoroughly thoroughly good time watching it and number two is is no you know no bad position for a film to be in um really really enjoyed it loved it and um, it's just it been edged out by one other film really but uh I, 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 the amount of times i cheered on the inside watching that film and the amount of times mm-hmm. the audience cheered on the outside <laughs> Um, it might have been my favourite movie-going experience this year. Um, just watching that with a full crowd, with people loving it. Um, and I enjoyed it just as much second time. Mm. I think, um, yeah, it's number two for me as well. Absolutely loved it. Surprisingly so, as I've told you, the things that I was like, if you'd have told me beforehand the plot, I probably wouldn't have went to watch it. <laughs> but it was done really, really well. Um, and I really enjoyed it, especially off the back of the other two, the previous two Spider-Man films, mm. um, which I didn't not enjoy, but I didn't, I could take them or leave them. Do you know what I mean? They're just another run of the mill story. There's nothing different. Whereas this, I thought it kind of changed things. It kind of found some heart rather than just some, you know, and I know Spider-Man is kind of like that, but some, little teenager making jokes as he's trying to save the world, making light of everything in a really serious situation. This kind of felt a bit more serious and it found its heart. So um, I enjoyed it um, a lot more. That Which helps me realise what I think, well, I know what your number one is. Um, <laughs> but, um, yeah, so... So, yeah, let tell everybody what your number one is, which I think My has been a very popular film this year. Is June. June was amazing, absolutely amazing. And it was number two, and then I just swapped them because just thinking about it, I mean, out of all the films I've seen this year, this is the one that transported me somewhere else. Um, 
That's why I've put this behind me, obviously. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but I, it, just to be somewhere that you can never be and seeing something you can never see outside of cinema. Um, the scale of it. You know, first time I didn't quite understand the story. Second time I got it. Uh, it was a film that benefited from a second watch because um, I don't know the story at all. Um, but it swept me along just this epic scale and I, seeing things that are so big, I couldn't comprehend them properly first time. And uh, yeah, really, really good film, I thought June was. Um, and the, it's it stayed with me longer than any other film I've seen this year. And uh, mm. the visuals on it, the music on it, uh, all of it. And um, so it couldn't be anywhere else other than number one. Yeah, I mean, it's a film I've not seen, and it's it's one it's going to be one of them ones I think that I don't want to see. But when I do see it, I think, well, that's great because I did, hated the original. I didn't get it; it was mm. nonsense. Then when you saw it, you said it's great, but I didn't understand it. I don't want to watch a film I don't understand. <laughs> um, so it's like because there's a lot of context which you would have got if you knew the, the backstory. Anyway, so it's one of them ones where I'm going. I don't want to sit and be confused for a couple of hours. But at the same time, if you get enough of it to enjoy and understand what's going on, then that's different. So I will get to it because I've heard nothing, nothing but good things from everyone, really. It's at the top of most people's lists, um, which is one of the ones, you know, that kind of puts you off because of my own prejudices against it because of the original. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I'm going, oh, I mean, I've not seen, I've never seen the original, but... Uh... Which we did. Born in Cold was a challenge, but I, yeah, uh, yeah. Second time, I, I was blown away by it. It was just weird, the original. Anyway, so I will get to it, but um, excuse me. So for me, number one, and this is obviously where it goes, oh, it's kind of difficult, but is Nomadland, which was released in the UK in I think, May 2021. Yeah, even was, though yeah. it had got all the plaudits and awards before that, yeah. um, which was which helps to some degree because probably wouldn't have watched it otherwise. But it's one of the films again I've talked about that. If I have to describe it to someone, it would sound rubbish mm. because there's no there's no peaks and troughs really. You mm. expect them, so you think, oh, this is going to happen. Some kind of um, you know. Um, tension or some kind of confrontation, but it doesn't. No, it's, there's it's no just, much plot. No, there's just a simple challenge of um, doing what she did and the financial context at the time that led a lot of people to do that, um, the despair. So I just loved the emotion of it. Aesthetically, it was it was absolutely amazing. Mm, beautiful film. The mm. colours, and the, but the quiet, the use of sound, the use of music. I thought it was really good to see because there's not a lot of plot. It was like being in a, watching a documentary, and I know that that was part of the intention. But um, you know, McDormand's performance again was was outstanding, and it's just mm. I just I just loved it. And it's one of the things that when I think of it, I just think about those things. Um, I still am in touch with how I felt when I watched it at the time. It doesn't leave me. So it was yeah, I was just impressed by it. And again, I don't think it's one of them films that you can watch loads and loads of times because, <laughs> do you know what I mean? It's like, but as a piece of filmmaking, I thought it was spectacular. I really did. Brilliant. It's it didn't make my top ten, unfortunately. It is on my list, but uh, I, I and I did like it a lot. But um, yeah, very good film. I think the, the the lack of plot for me means I'm probably less likely to watch it again. But yeah. thoroughly, thoroughly good film. There's um. I don't know. We've got nothing conclusive there apart from Spider-Man No Way, no Way Home is the second best film of 2000. <laughs> yes, we agreed on that. <laughs> the rest of it is is fairly inconclusive. We've got some films in there. So we had No Way Home and Mitchell versus the Machines, I think, and yeah. Nobody were the three that we all had, yeah. both had. And then others that we didn't put in for different reasons because we'd watched them in a different year or, or whatever. So, so what I think it's probably best to do is rather than because we can't, unlike Christmas, where we did have a definitive list this time, it's just to maybe see what other people think, what their top tens are, and put put ours online, yeah, um, and see how people's compare and contrast to those. And I think between us, there's 15 really good films there, maybe 16. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, 
but uh, the, what I am going to try and do is the ones from your list that I haven't seen, I'm going to try and catch up with now. Yeah. Um, do it. Yeah. Well, I'm I think it's, it's probably important now we're going to look at some specific aspects of those films um, and, and, and talk about that for a little bit, yeah? Yes, we're going to give our awards out for, for things. Um, we obviously, uh, the first award we came up with was our favourite film of the year. Well, we've already done that, really. Yeah. Uh, in our top ten. So your favourite film of the year was Nomadland. Nomadland will get my award for best film of 2021. Yeah. And uh, June gets mine. And the runner-up is Spider-Man No Way Home. Yeah, Spider-Man No Way Home would be my runner-up as well. Yeah. And, you know, it's a commendable runner-up, <laughs> you know. Um. Mm. So the second award that we were going to do was the best film you've watched for the first time in 2021 from any year. I guess we should exclude 2021 from that, though. Yeah. So any film from another year, any other year, <coughs> um, which was which was the favourite film you've watched for the first time this year? So for me, there was a loads in there. There was loads of different ones that I enjoyed watching for the first time. So there was... Um, yeah, I'm trying to think of some hours looking at them this morning. So, Riders of Justice, there was... Um, what else did I watch for the first time? Well, there was a fair few. I'll, I'll come back to it in a minute. But the best one I watched was actually The Help. Oh, right. So, I'd never seen The Help before. Again, it was something that was like, didn't really appeal to me. Didn't think it would be a film that I would enjoy, but I thought it had an important story to tell. So I watched it, and I knew the book was uh, hugely successful. So I watched it, and I just loved it. I really just loved it. Thought it was powerful. Thought it gave insight into, you know, historical context and um, oppression and, um, you know, the human condition and hope and despair. So, yeah, I just thought it was it was a really well-made film. One of them things where I think, oh, I wish I'd read the book now. But, um, but yeah, it was... It was probably surprising to many because it's considered if you look at the films I've watched. But yeah, it was the one that I think I really, really enjoyed that. Yeah. Good film. Good film. Good performance, isn't it? Oh, brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. And a lot of, you know, I mean, yeah, it's such a, a strong cast, really good cast. And um, for me, um, my favorite film that I watched for the first time this year, and I get I had a, I had a bit of a job picking one, but actually thinking about it, it's the good, the bad, and the ugly. Um, yeah. I'd never seen it before. I got on a proper Western kick this year. I don't know why. Um, and I enjoyed some of the, you know, I remember Once Upon a Time in America really enjoyed it. I thought, how, you know, how can you improve on this? And then I forgot, how do you improve on it? You put Clint Eastwood in. Mm. <laughs> and uh, really, really enjoyed the good, the bad, and the ugly. Uh, and kind of a little bit disappointed in myself that I'd not seen it before. Um, but really, really, really enjoyed that film and uh, might be my favourite Western. Yeah, I felt the same about, I think what I would have had a look at was probably Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I watched that for the first time, really enjoyed that as a film. Um, so that would have been Little Women as another one that I would have oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, watched one? for the first time and was really impressed by. Which one did you watch? I watched the one with... Emma Watson in. All right, yeah. I prefer the other one. I prefer the Winona Ryder one. All right. I think it's. I think it's. I think. Yeah, I, I'm not so keen on the uh, the playing with the structure that happens and you know the jumping backwards and forwards in time bit. Yeah. I prefer it when it was told straight because I think it has more impact. But hey, it was still good. Still good. Yeah. Um. Okay. Hidden gem of 2021. So films that you think people probably haven't really given much credit to or have even seen. Um, but you think so deserves was, a mention. What was the best film that you watched for the first time in 2021? Oh, Good, Bad and the Ugly. Oh, yeah, sorry, was, you just said it. Yeah, <laughs> Good, the Bad and the Ugly. Yeah, absolutely. So the, the hidden gem of 2021, there was a few for me, but I would go with what we've already talked about was the Mitchells versus the Machines. Yeah, yeah. So there was a few, but for me, it was just, it was totally unexpected. Yes. On, on every level, I thought, a cartoon because I think it was you that said it was really good. I was like, cartoon, it can't be that good. And it was just, yeah, really good. Yeah, yeah. That uh, one for me as well, Mitchells versus Machines. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, where you're kind of like, why have people not seen this? <laughs> it's mm. great. And recommended to, to everyone when I'd seen it. Um, and uh, if I was to go with a runner-up, I'd say Promising Young Woman was a very good film that really didn't get as much 
seen as it should be. Again, during the pandemic, it didn't get the cinemas. It came out on Sky, I think, first. Probably got a little overlooked as a result, but uh, very good and a very good end as well. Yeah, for running up for me, I'd probably go with The Unforgivable or uh, maybe even Bruised with Halle Berry. I thought that was all right. Yeah, but yeah, the big one, Mitchell versus The Machines. Yeah. Um, if you haven't seen it, we both encourage you, watch it. <laughs> it's really good. You yeah. mightn't fancy it, but it's great. Okay. Absolutely. Biggest letdown of 2021. The biggest letdown of 2021. And it can't be Omnicron. No. <laughs> it, this is, and I debated this one because it's, I didn't expect it to be good, so I don't know if it let me down. Mm. But it let me down by the fact that it even exists. And we've talked about it before. And that was Home Sweet Home Alone. <laughs> so if you're going to make it, if you're going to take it on and make it good, <laughs> right? Prove me wrong. <laughs> and I wanted it to prove me wrong because I didn't want to hate it, even though I f- knew I would from the moment it was even uttered. Um, so obviously there was other films in Mortal Kombat. Again, I didn't expect a lot of it in different films that just didn't live up to the expectation. But Home Sweet Home Alone was the biggest letdown just because of its existence. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> um, for me, it was old. Um, you know, I, I was kind of into, you know, a new M. Night Shyamalan film. Yeah, yeah. Great, up for it. Uh, I enjoyed Split. I thought, you know, he's back. He's he's doing what he does. Oh, my goodness. It was so boring. And it was so... It, it, the camera work is n- needlessly showy. And he's, you know, he's obviously having a good time. He's showing off what he can do. But I just and I just thought the acting in it was so bad. So I went in with high expectations, and I spent the whole film thinking, "This film's gonna, this is gonna get good in a moment. This is gonna get good." And I got sick of waiting for it to get good. It never got good. It never got good. It was such a disappointment. I can't, it's it's my, as far as I'm concerned, the worst film of the year. Oh. Um, and that is, it. and that's in a year where Wonder Woman 1984 came out. I mean. <laughs> Um, not that really, really didn't like old, and I wanted to. That's the problem. I really wanted to. Yeah, I, yeah, it's just fine. I think, yeah, but mm, I haven't seen it. But it is horrible like that. So I, I felt a bit like that with Eternals, mm. just because I thought, let's say, with the director, that it'd be great and. And I just thought it was a bit self-indulgent and boring. It just went on far too long. Yeah. And as I say, Mortal Kombat and a few others. But so for me, it was Home Sweet Home Alone. And for you, it was old. Yeah. What about your best acting performance of the film? Well, yeah, it's a know. difficult one. That I think, I think it's Mad Damon in The Last Duel. Okay. All three of them are really good. But I think... You see, you see each character three times. The first, you know, when you get in their version of the story, you, you, you kind of get their self-delusion of what they're like a little bit. And then you see them from somebody else's point of view. And I think out of all the characters, his version of himself and other people's version of himself was the furthest apart. <laughs> so his character is wildly different in the three versions. But then Adam Driver's doing something more subtle because his character is different, but not as different. So I uh, hummed and hard between all three of them, but I think actually Matt Damon's character, and Matt Damon's performance in The Last Duel is just, it's, it's, it's very good. He's so clever to play the same person in the same scenes mm. differently, but differently enough that you believe it's the same person. It's very clever. Um, so I was split between all three of them, but I've, I've gone for Matt Damon in the end. Okay, so for me... It was, there was Benedict Cumberbatch, I thought was really good in The Power of the Dog. Yeah. So um, Sandra Bullock was really good in The Unforgivable. Yeah. I went for Anthony Hopkins in The Father, I think. You know what I mean? She was just outstanding performance, really, really, really good. So, um, especially if it was so difficult and would be so scrutinized. 
Um, I just thought it was utterly believable and utterly heartbreaking. So, yeah, I thought it was just really, really good. So that would be mine. Great. I am not looking forward to watching that film. <laughs> but I'm going to, I'm going to, yeah. Um, but I've heard, I mean, he won the Oscar for that, didn't he? Yeah. 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 That's, uh, yeah, I imagine it's going to be a really good performance and uh, a real hard watch. But uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Well, no, I'm not. Well, <laughs> it's, uh, it's, um, it's, it's something to do. Okay, so best looking film. So for me, it was it was Nomadland. Yeah, very good, very good. Yeah, I just thought it was it just I, I almost convinced me, and I don't want to make light of it, but I wanted to go on a similar journey to be the places where they were. You know? Yeah, oh, I did as well when I was watching it. I was thinking that's you know, it, just the scenery looked so amazing to be in. Um, very well shot. Um, for me, I, I, I can't, I couldn't decide between June and the Green Knight. And I think, ooh, I think it's the Green Knight. No, it's June. Okay. <laughs> it might be a tie, <laughs> but June or the Green Knight? Yeah, June. I think June just just edges it with. Um, the variety of the worlds that don't exist that you see in it and the uh, the scale of things. But The Green Knight is a beautiful film. Um, Very but, good. But smaller in that sense. So, so that was best looking. So it was No Madland and The Green, and the green Knight. So. Yeah. No, June. June, bit, June beats it. It does? Yeah, just. No, it doesn't. Yeah, let's go with The Green Knight. Don't make your mind a mate. Which one is it? <laughs> it's Green Knight. Green night, okay. Um, so the best moment of um, film moment, your best film moment in 2021, what was it, Luke? Well, I'm going to try and say it without spoiling anything. But I'm not. I'm going to spoil everything. Find Peter Parker. Yeah. Love that moment. So, so that's um, mine too. You know, yeah. Spider-Man. Yeah, yeah. That's what I've got. Um, yeah. I thought I wouldn't, even though it had been speculating on, I thought it would be proper cheesy, but I, I got a bit giddy. <laughs> I did as well, yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah, I just woo, and I hate the concept, but I thought, oh, this is good. So I, yeah, and just even just experiencing that with a crowd that was feeling that same way. Oh, yeah, love love that moment, um, and it was everybody realizing at the same time what was going on, mm. and uh, yeah, great great moment. That's got to be the moment of the year for me. Yeah, me too. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Best director. Best director was difficult because I couldn't find a director that had done anything more than one film, which I really rated. Mm -hmm. But because it was my favourite film, because it was the best looking film, I'll go with Chloe Zhao. I was a bit less down by the Eternals, but still, aesthetically, it was unbelievable. And there's a lot of good camera work in it. But yeah. Yeah, it is. It was. I mean, it, you know, the, the flaws of that film. I don't think were necessarily the direction. It was more the script, wasn't it? Yeah, I think it was. Yeah, just boring. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> um, for me, it's it's uh, hummed and hard. Does Spielberg get it for West Side Story? But I think Denis Villeneuve gets it for June. Okay. Um, which is just, I mean, capturing what he captured on screen there, and the tone and everything with it. I think, yeah. Yeah, I think he just nips it off Spielberg. Even though Spielberg does a wonderful job with the camera work in West Side Story, there's this scene where uh, they're in a big gym having a dance, and the camera is just zipping around where no camera could, you know. But he's doing it, and it's all it's incredible work. Um, but in a year where Dune comes out, I don't think he can beat that. Okay, so that's best director for me. Okay, best action sequence. Well, it was it was it was really two that stuck out in my mind when I was thinking about this, um, and the the one that I will have to mention as an honourable mention was the bus sequence on Nobody. <laughs> so it was just really good, really clever, really realistic to a certain degree. Before mm. then, it's not so quite realistic, but yeah. Um, but it, the way it was shot, uh, the different camera shots. Um, yeah, it was just very good. Um, I just really, really liked it. I thought it was just a good scene. Um, yeah. But my favourite was 
the pre-opening credits scene for Bond and No Time to Die, that whole sequence mm. before with the motorbike and yeah, stuff like that. I just I just loved it. It's just probably my favorite bit of Bond ever. Yeah. Yeah, that's very good. My choices are exactly the same. Yeah. Runner up is the yeah, the bus fight uh, and nobody. And then yeah, that opening sequence in Bond. Um Loved it. That that whole bit where he's on the bike, that bit where he goes up the slope as well. Yeah, yeah. And all of that, yeah, it just had me absolutely hooked. Um, great and the sequence. music as well, it's just great. Yeah, it's just a shame with but that the, the final sequence in the film, despite what we think about how that ended, was nowhere near as exciting as no, that. No, no. Um, and you just feel, sometimes films, you know, they can't top their opening. And no. I think that's one that couldn't. It was just such a good opener. Yeah, it peaked too soon, didn't it? Yeah, um, but yeah, great sequences. Okay, uh, and our last award goes to funniest moment. So for me, it's, like, it's hard always to remember. It wasn't particularly funny year for films 2021. It's hard to no, remember. No, I, not many thing. comedies that I've, I've liked. And there was a thing, but one of the things I did remember was um, in Mitchell's versus the Machines, <laughs> with the robot, I can't remember his name, he keeps focusing on the dog and he can't decide whether it's a dog or a pig or a loaf dog, of bread. Pig, dog, pig, loaf of bread. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that just had me laughing because it was a pug and it did look a bit like pig. So I just uh, I just really like that. So for me, I remember at the time thinking that is really funny. Um, <laughs> um, so that's the funniest film moment of me for 2021. Funnily enough, exactly the same. Oh, wow. The uh, pig, dog. Pig, dog, yeah. loaf of bread. Yeah. She's brilliant. So clever. It was like, yeah, this dog's just looking. And saying, this <laughs> well, intelligent um, life form is trying to different, decide what this pug is. Yeah. Love that. Or the Furby in that as well. Yeah. <laughs> the giant Furby. <laughs> um, if there was to be one, if there was to be a runner up, um, I, I know you didn't see it, but Barb and Star go to Vista Del Mar has an amazing song. In it, sung by oh, what's the guy's name? Jamie Dornan. Yeah, um, yeah. singing a song um, <laughs> to a seagull. <laughs> the seagull, can you hear my prayer? And it's just this most bizarre. You know, it goes, "Here I am climbing a tree like a cat would, cat would climb a tree if a cat would climb this coconut tree." It's just the most bizarre song. Um, but it's done, and he's playing it dead serious while he's doing it, and it's just, it's very funny. Very funny. Um, but not as funny as Pig, Dog, Loaf of Bread. No. <laughs> yeah, and there was, yeah, there was some of this uh did remember, but I've forgotten now, so they can't have been that funny. Um, <laughs> not a good year for comedies. Not much in terms of comedy this year. No. So, but yeah, so... Well, we had similar similar things in the last few there. Yeah. That's good to know we think alike sometimes. Yeah, but as always, if you're listening to this, we'd like to know what you think. What what would, awards would you, what films would you give, give those awards to? What would your top 10 of 2021 include? Yeah, Where we would you post agree? the categories on Twitter so you can answer each one. Yeah, we'll post think. them on Twitter and on Facebook so you can have a, have a go at that. We'd love to hear what you think. Yes, and uh, if you're watching along and you you know spend some time going, oh, I want to jump into that conversation because I disagree with that, or I agree with that, then let us know. We'd love to have you on because this is all about conversations about films. You know, um, we're, 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 anybody can be a guest on this as long as you want to talk about films with us. Yeah, and, and that's happening in the next episode. In the next episode, we've got Stephen coming on to talk to us about horror films, which is something that Luke and I have discussed in the past that we've just never really been interested in. Mm. So he's come to talk to us about um, his love of horror films and also why he thinks they're important, particularly for young people um, to watch. So I'm sure that'll be a fascinating discussion, one that I'm looking forward to. Yeah. Um, because, again, it is an area that I've not got a strong opinion on, but it's something that I just dismissed early on. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. it'll be good to that. But if you want to come on and talk about anything else like that, um, we'd love to have you on, whatever it is. Brilliant. And uh, that's that's pretty much all we've got this week. That's our our view of 2021. And uh, I think, you know, some of the films you've put on your list there, uh, Ian, I'm going to have I'm going to have to have a, a watch of. Uh, yeah, and I'll have to get around to June and The Green Knight and The Last Duel. Yeah, 
yeah, I, I, it might it might change my top ten when I've started watching the sound of metal is one that I keep on meaning to watch on, so I'm going to try and get. Well, that we're same. not doing it again. We're just doing it now based on what we've seen. <laughs> no, that's true. I keep my I keep mine up to date on my letterbox anyway, just so that yeah. I can I can remember in years to come what I thought. I don't know why. No, what's there for, man? That's what's there for. <laughs> Okay, Brilliant. well, thanks for listening and watching wherever you've been listening and watching, and we look forward to um, to being back with you soon. Yes, look forward to seeing you next time.